Relive your 90s childhood by revisiting a Games Workshop classic, revamped, reimagined, and resplendent with detailed miniatures. That's the hook. Well, you weren't a 90s child. Well, take the well-loved game of Blood Bowl and stick it in a dungeon with corridors, magical rooms, treasure chests, and teleporters in this light-hearted spin on the popular game. That's the hook. Oh, you've never heard of Blood Bowl? Okay, well, let's try this one more time. Form a team of monsters who face off against each other in a humorous, violent game of fantasy football, all set in an underground maze of passages and secret rooms. That's the hook. I'm Adam Porter. I invent games and I review games, usually with a big focus on product design. Dungeon Bowl is a games workshop game for two players, which lasts one to two hours to play. Each player controls a team of fantasy football players, dwarves, ogres, dark elves, and ratmen called Skaven. The players build a dungeon together using the included tiles. And the game starts with six players on each side searching for the ball, which is contained within one of six treasure chests. The other five are booby-trapped with explosives. Once the ball is found, the goal is to score a touchdown by carrying it into the opponent's end zone. But there will be a lot of skirmishes along the way, with players beating each other up at every opportunity. From time to time, new players will teleport into the dungeon, landing on a randomly chosen teleporter. Much of what happens in the game is dependent on dice rolls, so players roll dice to pick up the ball, to pass it, to run long distances, to knock each other down, and to injure each other. The success or failure of a dice roll is dependent on the individual figure's statistics. An ogre is very good at beating other players down. A skaven thrower is very capable of passing the ball. A dwarf runner can cover long distances without too much trouble. And a noblar isn't good for much, but it's light enough for an ogre to pick it up and lob it down a corridor. As you could tell in my intro, it's hard to identify the hook for the game because of its history. Its evolution has been so complex and interwoven with other projects. So Dungeon Bowl was born in 1989 as a spin-off of Games Workshop's popular game Blood Bowl, which had been released a few years before. But to understand the appeal of the game, we really have to rewind a little bit further. In the 80s, Games Workshop was having huge success with its Warhammer range. Warhammer was a huge tabletop battle game where players collected and painted Tolkien-esque fantasy miniatures and faced off against each other around a tabletop filled with skillfully modelled terrain. Put simply, there were two different elements to this game, the modelling and painting hobby, and the war game itself. And 1986's Blood Bowl took these same fantasy races and pitted them against each other in a game reminiscent of American football. It was all very tongue-in-cheek, very violent, and generally played for laughs. But there was a whole other dimension to the game derived from the role-playing games which were popular at the time, such as Games Workshop's own Warhammer Fantasy roleplay. To get the most out of Blood Bowl, you'd want to play in a league, with a community of other fans of the game, each developing a team over multiple games, with players developing new skills or mutations, perhaps getting injured or even dying, all tracked with pen and paper like a traditional RPG. The original Dungeon Bowl was a ploy to sell consumers two more sets of plastic models, elves and dwarfs. In an effort to add value, Games Workshop hastily threw together a game to sit around these new minis, and Dungeon Bowl was born. The 2021 box set is a revival of that 1989 edition. While Blood Bowl has come and gone over the intervening years with multiple editions, this is the first reimagined box set for Dungeon Bowl. So when we try to identify the hook, it's tricky, because it's going to be different for every consumer. For me, the original Dungeon Bowl was one of my very first hobby game purchases, a formative experience at the age of 11 or 12 years. The hook is all about fond memories of childhood. I didn't hesitate to hit the purchase button the minute I heard about the re-release. Nostalgia is a powerful motivator. For many, the hook with Dungeon Bowl will be the new options it allows for their existing Blood Bowl collection. The game allows you to construct your teams in different configurations and gives you a new way to play the game. For these players, it's essentially an expansion. But Dungeon Bowl is actually a standalone game. Everything needed is contained within the box, so a third group will be coming to Dungeon Bowl as their first experience of the Blood Bowl world. A great product needs to deliver on its promises. And for our nostalgia-driven purchasers, the game succeeds here. The rules are updated to fall in line with modern Blood Bowl games, which is frankly much improved over the original. 
The dungeon tiles are far superior to the rectangular thin card tiles from the original. Even back when the original edition came out, I recall players utilising corridor tiles from other games to make more interesting dungeons. So the Switch was a given. The teams in the new edition are more varied than the original Elves and Dwarves. And that makes a lot of sense, because the multi-race teams is one of the defining features of Dungeon Bowl which sets it apart from regular Blood Bowl. But importantly, the treasure chests and teleporter rules are intact. As random as they are, these are the features which give Dungeon Bowl its unique identity. For a Blood Bowl fan looking for an expansion or new modes of play, this is an interesting package to delve into and I suspect it will split opinion. Blood Bowl is already a chaotic, random game where the core strategies all revolve around mitigating the luck of the dice. Dungeon Bowl ramps up the randomness considerably, and I think some Blood Bowl aficionados will dislike the loss of control. The 2018 introductory game Blitz Bowl was loved by many, myself included, for its short playtime and simplified rules, but hardcore Blood Bowl players rejected it as too far removed from their beloved game. For newcomers to the system, unfamiliar with either game, well there's a lot of catching up to do, and I'm not sure the game helps players out much here. The challenge in a complex system like this is the onboarding. How do we get players into the game without overwhelming them with the details of league play? Now I'm a lifelong dabbler in Blood Bowl. I've briefly played in one league, but all my other games have been exhibition matches, one-off games with no development between them. And I know I'm missing out on the heart of the Blood Bowl experience, but I just don't have time to commit to it. Each game is long. And as a result, I've never really got to grips with the rules around league play. I've always considered them an add-on to the core game. The Dungeon Bowl rulebook doesn't treat them that way, though. The core rules are freely interspersed with references to leagues. It's all quite daunting for a casual player, and I'd imagine quite off-putting for a newcomer. This wasn't an issue in the 2016 edition of Blood Bowl, which included a simple rulebook with basic rules up front, before listing the more complex details. Add in the modelling aspects, and you've got quite a barrier of entry to the game. Of course, painting the figures is optional. It's a very relaxing and rewarding hobby if you're that way inclined, but the models here are helpfully colour-coded, so you don't need to paint them to identify which team each player belongs to. Now, I don't have the original sprues from Dungeon Bowl because I've already constructed the models, but these are some similar sprues from the Blood Bowl Elf team. Each individual piece of the model needs to be clipped from the sprue and glued together. And there's some satisfaction in this, the Dwarfs, the Ogres and the Skaven were pretty simple to construct, but the Dark Elves were some of the most fiddly models I've ever had to put together. Some had up to 10 individual pieces. It was extremely challenging, and I'm a dentist, so my hand-to-eye coordination ought to be pretty good, but I hated putting them together. The next frustration is storage. These models are so intricate, they're really delicate. You can't just chuck them into the box, they're going to break in seconds, but there's no solution suggested, you're on your own. Now don't get me wrong, as a nostalgia-driven purchaser, I enjoyed navigating the complex rules and piecing together what I remembered about the game. I had a fun afternoon listening to podcasts while gluing minis together, and the more hardcore Blood Bowl players will find this stuff a breeze. It's the newcomers who are going to struggle. An introductory game, this is not. So let's look at a customer journey map. If we chart pain points, it's the onboarding as previously mentioned, setting up and learning the game. The same problems arise in the game. You find yourself constantly referring to the rulebook to look up specific situations and statistics. The game could drag on a bit. It's a very variable length. A player might find the ball in the first chest they open, then luckily teleport near the opponent's end zone, winning the game in mere minutes. Or the teams might slog on for a couple of hours, making very little progress. And putting the game away is a real problem. I mean, how are we supposed to store this stuff? Now my star ladder engagement system scores a game between 0 and 3 in 5 categories, and an overall engagement score of 10 or above sits atop the ladder and indicates a real favourite with me. Dungeon Bowl scores a 3 for theme. It's immersive. It tells a clear, exciting story as you play. It also scores 3 for interaction. Every single action you take impacts directly on your opponent. For stress and challenge, it's a three. The game is intense, and there are often times where you can't achieve everything that you want to. The feedback is high. Rolling a dice is always a buzz, and you get immediate rewards. But I've knocked this down to a two rather than a three, because it often feels unfair. 
There's no rhyme or reason as to why I'm rolling ones on every turn and my opponent is rolling sixes. So the feedback keeps on coming, but it's not always welcome. And as for meaningful choices, well, I'm only scoring Dungeon Bowl on one. There are certainly impactful decisions to be made throughout the game, but it's massively dependent on lucky dice rolls. So Dungeon Bowl scores a massive 12 points, but there's a proviso in my system, whereby points are deducted when a game gets in the way of itself. The issues we've already discussed cast a bit of a shadow over the fun in Dungeon Bowl. The complex rule set, the setup and storage, the constant looking up of rules and stats. I'm subtracting three points because of these many barriers to finding the fun in the game. So the game ultimately climbs nine rungs of the ladder, which is impressive and does indicate that it's really engaging, but it doesn't quite reach its potential as a true masterpiece. So onto my product design checklist. Is the game innovative? Well, it was in its day. Many other fantasy sports games have emerged over the decades. The concept of a league system, essentially a campaign, is not so fresh in 2021. But Blood Bowl was the first to popularise these mechanisms, and no other game plays quite like Dungeon Bowl. Does it fulfil a need? Yes, the original Dungeon Bowl was fondly remembered, but it couldn't hold up to modern standards. The game was crying out for a reimagining. It was an obvious market available for it. Blood Bowl is soaring high, with massive support from Games Workshop right now, and a huge community built around it. Expansion material like this is extremely desirable to players. Games Workshop has multiple brands, and Blood Bowl is one of the best of them. It's generated video games and the great spin-off card game Blood Bowl Team Manager. It's working really well for Games Workshop, and I'm sure we'll continue to see the brand grow over the coming decades. Is there scope for this product to grow with its user? Yeah, there's incredible scope here. So many Blood Bowl models exist. But because the teams are made up of a mixture of different races, players are going to have to buy many different team packs to build up their roster. There's loads of scope for customization, new additions and expansions. Delving deep into league play will generate endless scenarios, stories, and it'll allow players to explore the depths of the Blood Bowl lore which has developed over 35 years. So all that remains to do is plot Dungeon Bowl onto my idea execution matrix. Now, massive sales come from a terrific commercial idea, brilliantly executed. And Dungeon Bowl 2021 is a great idea. It builds on existing brands, the NFL, Fantasy Football Leagues, Warhammer, Blood Bowl, as well as 30 years of nostalgia. It provides expansion material, but it also works as a standalone game. The league play rules encourage the formation of a community, each of whom will potentially become a brand advocate. Amazing idea aside, the execution is truthfully middle of the road. The components are amazing, the highest standard as you'd expect from Games Workshop at the top of their game, but the massive barriers to entry and the muddled rules make me hesitant to push the game any higher. It's still very much a complex fantasy game with massive dependence on dice rolls, statistics and tables, the legacy of its 1980s origin. Nonetheless, the massive history of the game does lift it. The execution in this case is not just about one 2021 box set, but everything that's gone before. Games Workshop have masterfully created the Blood Bowl and Dungeon Bowl brands, and these strong foundations elevate the game and push it into the orange-red section of the grid. I anticipate that it will be a massive hit.